I recently picked up this Mac Pro off Kijiji for $100. I was really curious to see what these machines could do in 2023, now that it's been almost 17 years. So, it's about time we take a look. This is the first generation Mac Pro all the way back from 2006. And since Apple officially killed the upgradable Mac Pro about a week ago, I thought it'd be interesting to get a cheese grater for myself to take a look at what we once had in terms of upgradability. For $100, it's not a bad find at all, since the 20 inch studio display that was included can sell for $100 alone. Let's power it up and see what we're working with. So right off the bat, this device came with the best version of macOS ever, macOS 10.6.8 OS X Snow Leopard. It also came with the two dual core 3GHz upgraded CPUs as well as a nice 2GB of RAM, so definitely an upgrade from the base model. This machine also packs a very nice 7200 RPM 500GB hard drive, which is about as fast as it can get for this machine with its SATA 2 interface. However, I'll shut down the computer for now so I can get this computer the cleaning it needs. The studio display also squeaks a little bit, so maybe we can fix that. I'd be curious to know how much dust this machine holds. And, yep, that's about as much as I expected. To think this machine probably hasn't been open since it came off the factory. Let's get cleaning. Much to everyone else's delight, I vacuumed on full blast to get as much of the dust off as I could. I also found this pad that fell off. I then removed the drive base to get more of the dust removed, as well as to clean them off with all the dust cake done. Look at all that wonderful dust. It's about time that gets removed. For anyone wanting to do a similar cleaning project on an old gadget or laptop, make sure to get an iFixit kit. You know, not sponsored, but these are legit guys with quality tools. iFixit, you should sponsor me. First thing to come up was the GPU, but before that I had to remove the PCIe retaining bracket and suppress a retaining clip on the slot to remove the super dusty GT7300 from NVIDIA. This is the card that the computer shipped with and it's really showing its age. And before I removed the RAM trays, I decided to get rid of as much dust on them as possible to make them more graspable. These also need a really good clean as they trap dust really well. And with another quick vacuum, it was time to remove the DVD drive. And boy am I glad I did with all the dust flying around from here.
I decided to give the outside a quick clean as well as cleaning the cables just before proceeding to unscrew and remove the power supply. Look at all this dust. I decided to put the power supply back in because of the attached cables and looking as to where they run, it would be way too much effort to remove it. The thermal paste on these CPUs is probably rock hard. To get at the two processors, I need to remove the RAM cover and front fan assembly as well as the heatsink cover. After removing the single screw holding these fans in and using the PCIe bracket to wedge the fans up, I removed them without issue. These fans were also super dirty. Now I could remove the four screws for the first heatsink before doing the same for the second one. And when removing the RAN cover, yep, I found more dust. And using isopropyl alcohol and these wonderful little cotton pads, I could wipe away the existing thermal paste on the CPUs and heat sinks. With everything removed, it was easy to quickly remove any dust remaining before putting everything back together.
Time to give it a nice wipe down before adding some new thermal paste. This is my first time doing this, let me know how I did in the comments. And before re-adding the heat sinks, I installed the RAM cover right next to the CPUs. With all eight screws installed on the heat sinks, I slid the fans back in and installed the singular screw holding them in, but not before wiping the RAM cover again. Then I installed the heat sink cover. wipe down that dusty DVD drive before reconnecting the IDE and Molex cables and shoving the drive back in. And after installing the DVD drive, I shoved the RAM trays and GPU back in and screwed the PCIe bracket back in. Sliding all the drives back in. And wiping off the side of the panel. It was time to close up. Now that this thing is refurbished and ready, let's see what it can do. I was really curious to see now that we're in 2023 and no longer in 2006, what it was like to use this machine when it was first released or maybe a couple of years afterwards, since back then you could usually use a desktop for a couple of years, more than like three ideally, before you had to upgrade it. So I have 10.6 Snow Leopard on here because I couldn't get Mountain Lion, I couldn't get Lion working and uh, Mavericks was just a mess. So I'm going to use that and uh, I grabbed my uh, iPhone 3GS out and so I'm going to take some, uh, I just recorded some footage on here and basically what I did is I kind of reviewed the device as if I had just bought it even though it's not running the version software that it came with and uh, now I'm going to uh, edit that and uh, I'll see how that goes. Ah. 
All right, so I just finished exporting and now I'm, well, I just finished editing. <clears throat> it's been about, I wanna say an hour, maybe 45 minutes, maybe that's it. Uh, and I just created this little like quick review, it's nothing fancy, just to get an idea of what this machine's capable of. And so now I'm just waiting for it to render and then I'll show you that. Apple has just come up with a brand new device and I'm so excited to show you guys it. This is the brand new Mac Pro. A complete upgrade from the previous Power Mac G5 that it replaced. I ordered the version with two 3 GHz dual core Xeon processors for more processing power. However, I was able to save money while doing it. My total costs were around $3,000. It came with the base model GT7300 GPU. However, I was able to get the upgraded 2 GB of RAM model as well as the 500 GB hard drive. It really is an awesome machine and it will take on anything you throw at it regardless of what it is. It can take on movies, video editing, photo editing, as well as some light games and also some kind of career in case you're working in an office. It's a great machine and I'm really excited to use it for my next YouTube videos. It ships with macOS 10.4 Tiger and it's just a really awesome machine and I think you guys will really enjoy using it. It is a base model of $2,300 but in average so I spent the $3,000 instead. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I sure did. It was really interesting taking a look into the past and trying out one of these old powerhouses. With all that said, to check out the last time I took a look at a really old computer, that video is here. And to see the best headphones for under $200, that video is here. My name is Karsten, this is TechBox, and I'll catch you all in the next video.